Club motorsport in the United Kingdom is seen as one of the most interesting, competitive and exciting in the world. And for the remainder of 2021, I'm going to take you inside one of the UK's flagship organisations, the 750 Motor Club. We'll get to know the drivers, the cars and the tracks and let you know how you can get involved and go racing yourself. Today I'm going to focus on the F1000 Championship, quite a special one within the 750 Motor Club. These cars are quite crazy frankly, and over the last few years that I've seen them out on track with the 750 Motor Club, they provided some spectacular racing as well. So where better place to start than to speak to some of the drivers who race within this championship and have both been very successful within it. My name is Paul Butcher uh, and I race in F1000. My name is Matthew Booth and I am in the F1000 Championship. So it started with Formula One. Um, I was a huge uh, Ayrton Senna fan. Uh, vividly remember watching him almost but not quite win at uh, Monaco in the wet. Um, followed his career all the way, all the way through. Uh, and then eventually finally got myself to a point where I could, uh, I could play with it myself. As a spectator, it was probably at Silverstone in about 2008. We went to watch the uh, FIA GT Championship and those uh, Maseratis and Aston Martins, those V12s, it was just uh, one of those amazing sounds and amazing moments. And uh, see those cars now racing in historics makes me feel a bit old, but um, uh, it's, it's good to see those cars flying about again and bringing back those good memories. I don't think I went, I spectated at a motorsport event, or not a serious motorsport event, uh, until I actually started competing. So um, I started out in the Caterham Scholarship, um, which is brilliant because they kind of throw you straight in the deep end. But my, my experience of, of club level motorsport has almost entirely been on the on the inside rather than sort of spectating to, to start out. The first car race was here at Brands Hatch. Um, it was brilliant. It's, uh, it was uh, in the low cost championship, which is also a 75th Motor Club. So I've, I've started with 75th Motor Club and stayed with them. That's the just such a brilliant uh, club. Um, in the low cost, I think I was um, 0.04 off of coming third place. It were side by side finish, and I think I've, I've had three finishes all here that have all been within like less than a tenth. And it's always here. It's um, it's always a great track for that close racing. But yeah, it started off in low cost. I guess you'll not be surprised to hear that uh, a lot of it comes down to money. Um, so I wasn't able to start until I was until I was thirty. Basically, when I got to the point where financially I had enough, I had enough behind me. Um, and the the final trigger actually was my wife saying, either you need to stop talking about it, or you need to do it. Um, so I, I took the plunge and and yeah, never looked back. Since its launch in 1997, the F1000 Championship has provided exciting, cost-effective racing and established itself as the premier bike engine single-seater category in the United Kingdom. The F1000 Championship offers a proven and affordable route onto the single-seater ladder. The principle of these cars is to create a non-developmental championship allowing uniform performance across the cars. This is truly some of the fastest and most competitive single-seater racing you're going to be getting in the UK. These slicks and wing racing cars have immense handling characteristics and you can find yourself going from 0 to 60 in just 3 seconds and all the way up to 150 miles an hour while revving your car to 14,000 RPM. A typical weekend in the championship is a qualifying session followed by two or three races, with the 750 Motor Club typically providing a test day before the event. I'd always been a fan of the F1000 class since I was, well, about eight or nine. Um, I, I was looking through my wardrobe the other day and I found some drawings that I'd done of my own F1000 with my race number on it as a, as a child and now I've managed to get it so when I heard that the uh, the class was coming to Central from Motor Club I thought perfect timing like let's let's do it and um, saw a car up for sale went and bought the first thing we saw essentially and uh, brought it here for the first round in 2019 and uh, absolutely loved it and came second and was 0.04-ish off of winning it so yeah it's a uh, it was a great choice to get into it and obviously won the championship that year 
that's why I've stuck by it because it's uh, such a good class and you, you can't get better than it. After I did the scholarship, I had a, a period where I was kind of trying to work out which direction I, I wanted to go in. Um, and I looked at, I don't know, seven or eight different series. And, and one of them was to carry on up the cater and ladder, obviously. Um, and I looked at um, endurance racing. There was a really good series at the time called the Centurion Challenge, 100 mile races, which I very nearly entered. Um, but uh, the, the trigger was actually going to the autosport show and seeing these cars. And um, we went to a race meeting at Lydon to, to spectate um, and watched, watched a race there, which was absolutely brilliant. And I, what I felt then is actually pretty much what I feel now, which is it's really difficult to see how you're gonna get uh, a faster and more enjoyable car for less money than, than these things. Uh, they're just the most amazing value. Uh, and they've spoiled me for anything else. Now. That feeling when a roller coaster goes around a corner and just pins you to the seat, that's what feeling you want in this car because that means you're actually getting the cornering forces and the speed through the corner correctly. It's, I think it's one of the things that makes this car pretty much unique in that it's got a, a really good balance of mechanical grip and aero. So it, it's not like uh, a Caterham, which is all about mechanical grip. It, but it's also not like um, yeah, a modern F3 car where you have to set it up so firm in order to get the aero working that you effectively have zero mechanical grip. And the, the, the end result of that is you end up with a car which is really forgiving to drive. Um, you know, the, the combination of, of a relatively um, uh, soft suspension compared to what you would what you would typically get in a wings and slicks car. We run um, uh, cross ply tyres rather than rather than radials, which again are, are much more forgiving. And what it means is you can. It's going to sound a bit weird, but you can kind of take liberties with the car that you couldn't do with with almost anything else. But you also have the the grip that you get from wings and wings and slicks. So to my mind, it's it's a brilliant um, compromise between. The, all the various different things that you could get out of a, out of a car. It's, it's a very easy car to drive, but also a car that teaches you a great deal about driving. Because you can, the, depending upon how you drive this car, will dramatically change the way that it behaves. So, you know, a lot of cars, it's all about setup. And you can do the setup stuff with this, but actually you'll get far better uh, results by concentrating on your driving. You know, if you want to make it understeer, you can make it understeer. If you want to make it oversteer, you can make it oversteer. Just by trailing the brakes a little bit more or being a little bit more gentle with the throttle or, you know, whatever it happens to be. The chassis that these cars use are the Mark 6 slash 7 Jedis. They include a Motorsport UK homologated tubular steel space frame chassis and popular engine choices within the championship are the Yamaha R1, Suzuki GSX R1000 and the Suzuki GSX S1000. Any standard or close ratio gearbox is allowed and the number of gears must be as it was in the original for that particular engine. The cars run fully adjustable unequal length wishbone suspension with Jedi Racing spec shock absorbers. Braking wise, the cars use a two-port AP Brembo calipers front and rear onto solid groove discs. And they're also running Ferodo brake pads. And in terms of the tires, the only option you have is the Control Avon tire. This once again is allowing an equal playing field across the grid. And also great news that tire support is normally available at the racetrack. Part of it is the fact that I enjoy driving the car, but a lot of it is that it's a, probably the single most friendly paddock um, I've ever come across. Um, you know, occasionally you get the odd little little dispute because you know that's always going to happen. Um, but this is this is one of those series where everybody speaks to everybody else. It, you know, it's not one of those series where everybody disappears off into their motomes and closes the door at the end of a race. If somebody has a problem, then everybody will pile in and, and help out. If somebody's missing a, a part somebody will find the part and, and, and sort it out. So yeah, I, it's just a really nice way to spend time. It's so often that there's me, Lee and Elliot, well, especially this year, me, Lee and Elliot have just been at it from like race one. Um, it's been, we've all been pushing each other to get even better. We've been like fighting at track at lap record pace. So it's just been um, that extra step up and we've all just like, 
forced each other to get better and it's just made a brilliant a brilliant experience yeah we'd all, always like to get lap records because who them but um and everybody wants to win the championship uh, we just it's just about being consistent and not having those um bad races where you don't score points um but sometimes there's nothing you can do about that but we just as long as we um get the most out of it that we can and we know we've not slacked or um not put the effort in and not tried as hardest so as long as we're working hard and we do as best then we get what we get having come second in the series twice i really want to uh, turn that into a, into a win but um the the problem is unfortunately the series has become so successful we've attracted such a, a a strong grid that um i'm doing lap times now which two three years ago would have put me on pole now they're putting me fifth sixth on the on the grid so uh, while i i still have the aim of winning the series it's going to be a hell of a lot harder now than it than it was some very interesting stories about the F1000 Championship and to be perfectly honest, it provides some of the best racing I've seen in the UK for a very long time. Now, as of recording this, the F1000 Championship in 2021 still has two rounds remaining at Alton Park and at Snetterton. So if you're interested in watching this series or maybe even going to speak to some of the drivers involved to understand a bit more about these incredible vehicles and how you can get racing yourself, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the cars out on track for the remaining two rounds and hopefully you'll be there to cheer on the guys who are in the midst of a very interesting championship battle. I think three or four drivers vying for the title this season. Thanks as always for everyone who helped me out with this video, the drivers, everyone within the F1000, Paddock, and also the 750 Motor Club for making it all happen. So look forward to sharing more stories from the 750 Motor Club Paddock over the coming months, and we'll see you soon.